good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you uh, for uh, you know, uh, being part of this important forum. Uh, we're going to talk now about how data drives brand protection and really some of the changes that we've seen over uh, the past year or the past few months since the pandemic happened. Uh, it's probably no surprise the e-commerce has grown because of the pandemic by 40%. We have many more people buying online, much more traffic, much more revenue happening online new uh, senior citizens and other new participants to the online community. And with that, also fraudsters are looking for uh, the online in order to uh, try and make sure that they make a buck out of it as well. So uh, what I, I hope to uh, convince you today is that uh, the changes we've seen with COVID-19 and the pandemic actually mean that having an online brand protection strategy is no longer a nice to have. It's a must have. And also, I hope to cover at least the principles of how uh, you could uh, uh, have such a strategy in place. It's basically how are you, were you, are you going to be able to see everything that is out there? It's not as easy as uh, some of you may think. Collect the, the relevant data, data that is out there, analyze that data, and finally uh, be able to act on it. My name is Tamir Rotter. I manage for Luminati the uh, EMEA and APAC, APAC uh, geographies. Uh, I've been with Luminati for about three years and more than 20 years in the, uh, in the technology uh, business. What uh, Luminati uh, kind of came about to solve is a problem that maybe a lot of you are not very familiar with. And this is the fact that a lot of websites today are responsive websites. What does it mean to be a responsive website? It means that I have the ability to show different content to different audiences. That's, you know, uh, sounds like a really good technology to have in place. But in fact, it also makes our lives when we're looking to collect data much more difficult. So it depends on the country we're coming from, the type of the IP we're coming from, whether it's from a home or from an office or uh, the uh, uh, fact whether that IP was used before so many times to access the website, I can decide what type of content is being presented. Uh, and that's obviously a challenge is what we in Luminati uh, enable organization is uh, to uh, run an ethical online data collection, uh, basically viewing the internet transparently and collecting public data from any lo location in the world without getting blocked or cloaked that is served the wrong information. Uh, we are the leader in this area. We are more than 750 approved patents in this domain. And we serve today actually more than 10,000 customers, including some of the uh, Fortune 500 companies. So talking to a lot of uh, big brands out there, I was surprised sometimes to, understand, to learn that many of them don't have a very clear brand protection strategy. And so I'm basically uh, asking myself many times, so, you know, is that not like driving your car into a, a high street, leaving it all open so everybody can come in, take whatever they want, drive your car away? Or is that not like, you know, leaving your front door open so anybody can come and take whatever is in your house? And I think it really is because uh, with what we see around hundreds of billions of dollars every year, are being lost to those uh, uh, counterfeit piracy, gray market. Uh, and in fact, it's a dollar out of every five. So that's 20%, a very, very large number. 20% of the dollars that are out there are kind of uh, being blown away. But these are only the hard numbers. As I think, Stephanie, you mentioned before me, let's talk about the, uh, the software, the software uh, 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 impact of that. So what happens to our customer experience, to our customer loyalty, to our brand reputation, when people actually believe that they are consuming our brand, but in fact, they're getting a very different experience and they're, they're not going to be that happy, right? So it's both the hard cost and the soft cost together that make a big difference and really have you know, a, a great impact on us as brands. What we've seen with COVID-19, as I mentioned, is a huge increase in e-commerce and what's happening uh, you know, in, on the online space. 
But I want to share with you some fascinating, really, really interesting numbers. Very recent, a survey was done uh, just this month. Uh, we have done it with Vanson Bourne, which is a market research company. And uh, we've asked this year, as well as last year, uh, a lot of consumers, are you planning to do the majority of your holiday shopping online? And if last year that was 24% of the shoppers, this year is 51%. I think that's amazing. It's the majority of the shoppers in 2020 are going to do their uh, holiday shopping online. It's more than twofold. Some of the more interesting facts is that, you know, we have new community, communities like the, uh, the senior citizens. Uh, think of your mom and pops or your grandparents. Only 15% of them were really doing the majority of shopping uh, online, but this year is 39%. And what's even more exciting is that 61% of the shoppers say that this is not just something they're doing to adjust to the lockdown or the situation that we're all experiencing right now. They believe they are going to most likely stick with online shoppings in year to come. So there's been a whole revolution happening in the last few months. And, and that means that everything is really moving into uh, the, uh, the online space. And with everything moving into online space, as I mentioned, it's an immense opportunity for scammers. So no surprise, since the start of the pandemic, the counterfeit products have increased more than 35, uh, uh, 38%. Uh, and that's, an, I think, uh, an unprecedented number. But you know, let's not just talk percentage and numbers. Let's just look at a huge company like 3M. I believe most of you are familiar with them. They are one of the S&P uh, 100, one of the largest American companies, 96,000 employees, more than $32 billion in annual sales, really thousands of uh, uh, different products. And obviously the uh, masks that a lot of us use to protect against the COVID-19 has uh, been a, a very uh, interesting product to try and, uh, and counterfeit. And just over the last few months, just one product of those thousands and thousands of products they have identified many tens of cases where people were selling fake N95 masks at higher prices. And that has caused it, again, just in the last few months, 14 lawsuits were filed because of the find findings they have uh, uh, found online. So this, that's kind of uh, taking the bigger numbers and giving it a, you know, a real concrete example. So what are the big brand killers? It could be the more traditional ones. So it could be Rug websites and domain cloning, people who are actually trying to mimic your website and attract uh, traffic from uh, your website into their website. But it could be also people who try to uh, 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 impose to you on social media, or impose to your brand on social media. It could be some kind of a knockoff product. And you, know, you could see some examples I picked up uh, here on the slide. But it, what we see now is also people who try to uh, uh, violate copyrights, uh, people who try to uh, squat around with your trademark, people who try to uh, uh, simply reuse your patents by in in infringing them, exploiting your brands in a lot of different ways. And these are the people that really intend to do harm and they may do it for, for a business reason. But what we found is that with social media becoming such a big place where people spend so much time and so much commercial type of discussions are also happening there. There's a lot of negative feedback uh, happening in social media and organizations are looking to protect their brand by the, the big influencers, the, the big uh, uh, chatters that putting in responses and feedback in social media. So they're looking for a way of finding them and being able to respond on them really, really quickly. And finally, it's all about the, uh, the pricing, making sure that uh, your brand is sold for a fair price, a, a price that you may regulate or you want to have some influence on as a manufacturer. And we see that in the internet, you could sometimes find uh, people who are offering your price, uh, your products in a price that is not in line with your uh, recommended uh, pricing. That's obviously uh, one of the areas that could negatively impact your brand. So let's try to understand why is it so difficult to simply collect that? Because a lot of people would say, okay, it's, it's that simple. Like it's just go out there, you know, have uh, you know, bots, robots going into a lot of different websites, looking at them, collecting the data and, and that's it.
But the reality is actually much more complicated. It, it goes down to this responsive capability of software, of product, sorry, responsive capability of websites that I mentioned earlier. And, and let's think of you as a, as a popular brand and you're trying to go into an online retailer and check uh, that your product is indeed sold for $109, which is your uh, regulated price for the product. So actually this online retailer can really see it's you who is checking on them because they know your IP, it's easy to identify you and they could show one price for you and in fact, another price for a consumer. Uh, you could say, well, I could use some kind of a server in the, uh, somewhere in the clouds in my AWS server, Azure, whatever it is, and then it's a different IP altogether. But those type of uh, uh, data center IPs, they also tend to be very, very easy to identify. And again, if I'm a scammer, if I want to serve you a different content, then it's very easy for, for me to identify that and still show you the 109. Well, if you're coming from your mobile phone or if you're coming from your home, you're going to see a totally different price, a $99 price, which is not uh, what you as a brand would like to see. So how do you overcome that lack of transparency? It's actually not that complicated. You want to look at the internet from the eyes of consumers. And this is exactly what we enable with uh, Luminati. We basically built a whole network of more than 72 million consumers who have agreed to help and we're letting organizations to see the internet and connect, collect information from the internet using their IP addresses. So what is the solution to all these cameras? What, what do you need to implement? It sounds pretty complicated when you think of the overall problem, but in fact, it's pretty simple. Uh, we work with a lot of uh, brand protection agencies, but we also work with a lot of organizations of brands themselves because it's actually not that complicated to build in-house. Uh, and it is a process that I, that, uh, I say, I, call, I kind of try to break into four. The first one is we wanna make sure we see everything that is out there. And I just explained how by looking from the eyes of real consumers, we can make sure that we really see the real truth, okay? Then it's the ability not just to see it, but to collect it, to bring it into one repository, into one data repository. Uh, thirdly, it's about the analysis. We want to make sure that we have the ability to analyze all the data that is being gathered there and having alerts, red flags that would flag anything which is uh, not what uh, we expect it to be. And there's a lot of different solutions that can help you uh, do that. And finally, we want to have the right process to act on it. So once we have the data there, uh, once, the red, once the red flag is uh, indicating there's an uh, uh, an analyst that is looking at it and implementing a, a process to uh, act against the uh, brand protection, the, the brand infringement. I want to share with you one of the uh, use cases or a case study. Uh, some of you may know uh, Redpoints is one of the uh, uh, leading brand protection agencies that we work with. And they actually came to us a few years back because they were running into the same issues I've just mentioned. They're, they couldn't collect uh, the uh, data with the full transparency they wanted, with the full volumes they wanted. Uh, and obviously we helped them with the Illuminati technology. And the result of that was that uh, they were obviously able to expand their offering to their existing customers, but also win a lot of new customers. And most importantly, uh, by overcoming some of those uh, difficulties and hurdles, they were able to improve their operational efficiency. And in fact, they report more than 100,000 euros of operational saving uh, just in that data collection uh, process every year. So we spoke about the whole process and how you want to collect data. But one of the things that uh, a lot of organizations uh, maybe not pay enough attention to is how do you collect the data? And if you uh, remember uh, a few years back, uh, the whole wave of change started around GDPR, and data privacy and so forth. And a lot of organizations had to go a real change in order to adapt to all the new legislation. And with so much more happening online, so much more data collection happening more happening online, uh, I believe that the next wave is gonna be not only about data privacy, but more about ethical data collection. And you wanna make sure that you build your data collection process right 
So uh, it's not a problem for you. You don't have to uh, have the pain of adapting to it later. And what does it mean? It actually makes it means that you build in a process and you're using a solution that uh, has the right capabilities of not damaging the digital ecosystem. Because as, as there's more and more traffic out there, there's more and more data collection. You, you want to make sure that your data collection matches the uh, uh, website's uh, capabilities, those websites that you're collecting data from. Then you want to make sure, obviously, that you abide by global regulations. So here in Illuminati, for example, we have six compliance officers that monitor that uh, uh, in a lot of different ways to make sure it is kept. And finally, as we really need to have those consumer IPs as part of the uh, data collection process, we want to make sure that there is a, a proxy peer consent. So those people who are used, who are using their IPs in order to collect the data, have actually given their consent to, uh, uh, to us. They have an understanding that we are using them for data collection. And we have also uh, the ability to uh, 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 allow them to uh, uh, sign off from the service if they want at any time. So I'll, I'll try to uh, sum it all up. What I believe is the, the way forward as we go into 2021, you cannot really afford not to have uh, a very clear strategy of uh, brand protection for your brand. Otherwise, you're simply leaving it open to the fraudsters and you're gonna lose big time. Uh, the way to go about it is to implement an automated approach that starts with the right visibility and collection capabilities, but continues with the right analysis and ability to act on what you've collected. And finally, you wanna make sure that you do it in an ethical way, not damaging the ecosystem and being ready for uh, the probably uh, new wave of regulations around the web data collection. That's pretty much it for me. I try to keep it short so we have enough time for all of you uh, to ask questions. Thank you so much, Tamia. Hello, do you guys see me? Thank you, thank you so much, Tamia. It's very, very insightful, uh, especially when you mentioned that one of the strategies is to look at the internet through the eyes of the consumer, uh, which is an expression that I really liked. And, um, and those techniques are for sure going to be um, a pathway to establishing a strategy that works during this time, especially post, uh, post pandemics. Any questions for Tamia? I, I have a question. Um, Tamia, really, really interesting. Um, when you talk about your network of 72 million users, which is massive, by the way, so well done, um, where, and you, you, you talk about collecting data, are you actually, I don't know, for want of a better word, are you actually scraping what they see um, during those sessions, or, or how does that work? Okay, so what we provide in Luminati is a whole data collection enablement platform, so we can provide the proxies for uh, our customers to collect data from those IPs, as an example. We also provide unblocking software to unblock whatever uh, limitations that websites to uh, put for bots to try and stop you from doing mass data collection. But still, as we control it to make sure that it's ethical and it's not harming the ecosystem. And finally, we also offer a data collection automation soft, uh, service, which means you tell us what it is you want us to collect from you for you and we do the data collection on your behalf. So we provide our customers with all the areas, areas of uh, uh, service, whether it's just the uh, uh, proxies and they do the data collection or we do the, the data, data collection for them. Super interesting, thank you. It's indeed extremely interesting. Uh, and I have a, tech, a little bit more technical question as of this. Um, how do you, if you if you're doing using your proxy structure to uh, go on the website and grab the information, uh, um, your customers actually ask you to uh, to grab them. How do you deal with the security issues? Like for example, if you go to uh, governmental uh, pages, and especially here in Europe, as you know, the uh, European Communion uh, structures are sometimes very very difficult uh, to even get normal information from the website. So the access is actually not very stable or intentionally kept uh, um, on, on, on a low level. How do you deal with that? 
So there are, I think there are probably two answers. One is whether somebody restricts access to the public to uh, the content of the website. This is not something that we deal with. We are all about uh, looking and making the internet transparent. So we're not making something which is not transparent to some of the to uh, to any user except those who sign in transparent to the rest. So we're not doing any kind of uh, breaking into any uh, website. We're just going to be enabling everyone to, to have the same visibility that a normal user would have. Uh, so we don't we don't inf we don't try to break into a website. We just show publicly available information. What we do provide is because some websites do restrict you by the by the IP, as I mentioned, they don't sure. allow more than so many uh, entries from the same IP. And, and maybe you as a business, it's important for you to visit that website on an ongoing basis and refresh your data from it. So that's how we allow you each time to go into that website with a different IP and therefore always have access to it at scale as you need it. But that's what I exactly, <clears throat> sorry, exactly what I, what I meant, I, I was not thinking that you're going and stealing information from from the website, but it's uh, especially for the for the European Union uh, website where the information should be publicly available, uh, and they they are actually as you as you say uh, they are blocking then IPs because uh, they think that someone's actually doing uh, uh, illegal stuff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's for us especially uh, something or for our customers. It's sometimes a uh, very um, um, yeah, hard way to 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 get into the or to the information they need to uh, to uh, to ask us the right questions, etc. So and we we cannot tell them go this way or that way because when they are doing other ways, they are blocked again from uh, from uh, from the other source, which is sometimes uh, a real pain in 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 working with uh, with these kind of people. And that's why Correct. this I is exactly why why we came to be. And again, we are offering you uh, either. Use our prog just as a proxy service. Use our IPs, or we can collect the data for you, whatever you prefer. Okay, so that's something uh, we. I, I certainly come back to you uh, after the after the meeting. It's uh, very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'd like to comment too. Uh, I, I am actually myself uh, a customer of Luminati, and so I could not agree more with. Everything Tommy said. I also like to point out that uh, you know I have tried many solutions, but uh, Luminati is really the one enabling Pledger Shield uh, to to do what it's meant to do, which is project uh, written content from from websites and and uh, you know um, scammers really try to hide uh, things from you. Um, you could be visiting a website. Uh, that shows a, a really normal page, but actually what they are showing, for example, search engines, a very different results, and they might be ranking for your content. And if you visit this page, you would see something much more, much more different. Um, so some websites are, are really trying to hide what they they provide from you. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to, to say that uh, I encourage everyone to try it and, and they really have uh, the right services for the right job. There are a lot of flexibility in that. So, so it was just some, some customer feedback. Thank you, Jeremy, appreciate it.